Well, good morning. This is Brother Peter again with tidbits from the Word, and I kind of have to chuckle at my own self because my friend Brother Larry said, quit chasing those rabbits, Brother Peter, and, and the last two excerpts I've done, we've done more plain talk than we've done Bible talk. I think sometimes there's a need today to just do some plain talk, just, just have a conversation that people can understand, that people can associate with, and why do we have to think we're so high and mighty? Why do we have to think we have to have degrees to be able to uh, uh, tell somebody, oh man, I've got a DDD or whatever, and and uh, let's see, what is my bachelor in? And uh, I can tell you what my bachelor is in. I went to a school of hard knocks. That would be the, uh, the school of hard knocks. <laughs> Don't have to, there's no explanation for that other than what it says. Listen, James chapter 5, we were in this morning talking about the patience. And he said, take my brother and the prophets, in verse 10, uh, that have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. All of the Old Testament saints suffered some affliction. Listen, they lived in a day and age that we don't live in the first place. They had to walk across the land. They were marauders, and they were uh, wicked people out there who, who at any given time would come out from behind a rock and kill you just for the clothes on your back. And by the way, after doing some real studying in the last few weeks about some of those things, the uh, hyenas or the dogs of that day that were wild dogs out there, when uh, when God spoke uh, to different people and said the dogs are going to lick your blood and eat your flesh or whatever, uh, the dogs and the uh, big birds that eat flesh, uh, the scavenger birds, were in a battle with each other over there in that land for finding food. And uh, the hyenas, by the way, were even uh, said to actually kill human beings because they liked human flesh. So. Uh, you didn't have just a problem with other things over there. You had a problem with hyenas and dogs coming up, and they could smell you out, and they, they actually would attack you. So uh, you and I think we live in a tough and a dangerous world today, and we do. But uh, that world over there for these poor guys that were called of God, and they had to walk all over the place. They had to go. Elijah walked miles and miles and miles. If you read the story of Elijah and Elisha and see, how many miles a day or a week or a month they covered and they covered miles and miles of rough mean ugly land hard hard walking hard a uh, hard ground a hard uh, just a harsh living and then at night uh, they couldn't walk over to a house somewhere and turn a light on or turn the heat on or anything uh, they were walking in 40 degrees heat out there all day long and their only cover that they had for at night to keep them warm they had on their body already and uh, if you or I went over there dressed like we're dressed right now and we took a two-day walk a three-day walk over there we would freeze to death at night dressed like we are right now this clothing for our setting and the way we live is fine but over there for their setting even today they have to wear those robes and things so that during the day it keeps the heat from burning them slack to death and then at night they can pull their head down in that thing and curl up in a fetal position and find a hole in the ground and crawl in it and breathe and, and keep from freezing to death because it's cold at night over there and hot during the day. So, uh, uh, you know, there is some logic in this world. Let's see the logic of the Bible. The logic of the Bible said these guys suffered, and they suffered greatly. It said, take, take, listen to what he said, take my brother and the prophets. That's mean, think about the prophets of old in the Old Testament. Now, look, listen, look at them. They have spoken in the name of the Lord, and they did. They walked across this land speaking in the name of the Lord. It cost them to do that now. It wasn't something it didn't cost. If you're going to speak in the name of the Lord today, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you something. It may start today at your wallet. And these guys here, though, it cost, they had to leave any home or any structure they had or any place they had and go out through the wilderness from place to place. All right. For an example of suffering and affliction. 
What did these guys do? For an example of suffering and affliction, they did just like the Lord asks us to do. Many, many, many of you missionaries, I hope a lot of missionaries get these tidbits from the Word. I'd love to see every missionary in the world seeing these tidbits from the world and just hear some plain talk and know that there are people back here in America who know what you're going through, who know that you sacrificed your family, who know that you left your comfort zone and went over to a country, sometimes in countries where you're not accepted well, and sometimes in countries where they do not want to hear about Jesus Christ, too. And so, and then he said, affliction and patience. Now, they had to have patience. These older people were example of patience. What is patience? Do you know probably, and not probably, but we know it was a fact, that between the journey from one place to another, they had to have patience walking to get there. And uh, I can just see one of us, us uh, <laughs> a little unhealthy weaklings today, heading out on a six-day journey in 140-degree sun, and about the second day out, we'll say, why me, God? Why me? Why do I have to suffer 140 degree heat and walk and sweat and nothing to eat and the lions and the dogs after me and I have to watch out for people jumping up behind the rock? Why me, Lord? I can just see one of us. You know what we become? Let's see what we become. Verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Now these were happy guys. Show me unhappiness in them any time other than when they succumb to the devil coming after them. And every once in a while, one of those great saints would succumb to the devil, and they would hide. And when they hid, God would come to them and say, What in the world are you hiding for? You're, listen, you're my servant. I'm going to take care of you. And by the way, to die in this flesh on this earth is to close the door on this earth and to open the door to our eternal life in heaven. So death for a Christian is not a, a curse. It's an opening door to a new life forever. I'm ready to die right now. I'd die right this minute. It would, it would suit me fine. I'm ready to go. And, and this is what I tell people. I say, serve the Lord and get ready to go. All right, in patience. All right, we count them happy, the verse 11. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. Now, now, you folks that are listening to me this morning, get in your Bible. Get in your Bible and be able to read it like I'm reading it. This is a sensible book. This is not, this is not some mystery. It's a mystery to those who are not saved, but if you're saved, get in read it for what it says. It's like reading a novel. This is like reading a novel this morning. I'm reading a story this morning. Now, I know about Job. Do you know about Job? Job lost everything he had and his children and everything. And, and but Job didn't curse God and uh, or anything. And then, you know what? When Job died, he had twice as much. Now, when we get to heaven and we meet Job, Job's going to have twice as many in heaven as he would have had, had everything rocked on like it was, all nice and easy and everything. So sometimes tribulation, trial in life gives us a great boost. All right. Like Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, and Job saw the end of the Lord. <laughs> he saw the, hey, hey, God, God uh, treated Job pretty rough for a few minutes and said, Job, listen to me, my son. This is for a time, and after you leave this earth, you're coming up here and you're going to be in eternity forever, and you're going to be in total rest forever. So this little time on the earth and this little tribulation you're having in the body and the spirit and the soul on earth is worth it. So just hang in here uh, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. God is pitiful and of tender mercy. God actually pitied Job in a way even though Job was having to go through this in the flesh. Why did Job go through what he went through? Do you know why he went through it? The Bible said everything that happened to the Old Testament saints happened for you and I that we could see it. Job did what he did to be the Christian example, or the example as Christ was, to keep in there and hold true uh, so that you and I could have the picture that he left behind that we could follow in his footsteps when the time came to have to.